Oh, thanks. Yeah, I forgot to turn on one of the monitors. Um, so we have a lot to live up to, but what we're going to talk today is about the CMC ratio that I mention a lot, which CMC means that you are balanced, that it's a creative pragmatist, you like the balance on your body of something that is chill, something that is modern, and something that is classic. And I'm really glad to see that a lot of you guys have written me and you've said that like all of a sudden now after a couple of months of thinking of getting dressed that way, that it is really starting to click. When you get dressed and something feels off, you're really realizing that it's because you're missing one of those elements. So we are gonna dive very deep today on the notion of modernity because that is sometimes the trickiest one to work in. So I'm gonna give you some examples from the line and then I'll have some um, like homeworky type samples that I've pulled to talk from. And then I'm gonna give you some examples. Some of you guys have written me and you said, you know, what if I'm really edgy and I wanna wear like really fitted motorcycle jackets? Where does that fit into the story? And so what I'll talk to you is about how you can substitute one of the letters, okay? So in order to be a creative pragmatist, and I wanna be clear that the reason why you guys are watching this is because you like balance, right? And that's how we refer to a creative pragmatist. And it's kind of like, you wouldn't go to the meat market and ask for like the vegetarian dish, right? I mean, some of you probably would, but don't do that because that's annoying. Like, you, it's good to know that some people are really focused on something. So we're really focused on teaching people what it means to be a creative pragmatist and how to dress like a creative pragmatist. And I hate it when things are so watered down that you can't really get good information from it. And like, just think of Project Runway, how you always have like Nina Garcia fighting with Heidi Klum and you're watching it and you're like, well, you have to pick a side. Like you've got this sexy pants here and then, you know, Nina is like all fabulous and chic. And it seems like they're battling over the notion of what is good style. And this is what I tell people all the time, style is subjective, style is what makes you feel great. We have creative pragmatist style, that's what we're about, and that's what we're gonna stay the course, but I'll show you how to weave in some other elements as well. So today we're focusing on modern. Um, we're gonna show designs on uh, Dion and on Ashton, and then um, throughout though, uh, you can ask questions. I've got uh, Rain as our like hostess with most of us over here. And when you guys have a question, she's gonna call it out so we can be a little more uh, interactive than we've been in the past because in the past I haven't been able to read any of the questions because my eyesight's for shit. So this time we are gonna be able to uh, answer some questions live. So what we're gonna talk about is modernity. and. I just want to uh, give a picture first to help illustrate before Dion walks on here. So, we love modernity, okay? It's, you know, when you're in design, when you love fashion, it's, it's what you live for, right? And then, you know, like someone like old Margiela here, this is a new Margiela too under Galliano I love, but old Margiela is, it's great and fabulous, but like, what kind of toolbox would I be showing up at the grocery store like this, right? But it doesn't mean that you can't have modernity in your wardrobe because if you love things that are modern, you love it because it represents life. When you see things that are new, it represents forward thinking and pushing, you know, just constantly moving forward. And that's really important to me. And for creative pragmatists, uh, you, style is very much a functionality thing, but it's also very much about something that makes you feel alive and modern. So we have Dion here in our, hey guys. our little item. So why don't you talk about what you're wearing and what's kind of the chill modern classic element. Okay, perfect. So this sweater is definitely the more modern piece. It's just got this beautiful like little detail here, which I can show you how you can customize and style this. And then I have this beautiful high-waisted leather pencil skirt. So this is the classic element to my piece, but it still has a modern take in this nice fresh pop of white. And then I have this beautiful Felix boot that's not coming out until a couple of weeks, right? Um, this is just a nice shaft boot shape. I don't know, that way you can kind of see it a little bit. It's a tall brown boot. So the brown really neutralizes it and it adds a classic element, but it's still very modern. Also, the sweater, this is the most advanced piece that I'm wearing because it just looks like a beautiful cable knit sweater with an interesting flap detail, which you can actually take your arms out 
and you have many, many styling permutations. All right, so first you can just have it hanging and it looks really cool and interesting. Also, it's very similar to that featherweight cashmere I showed you before where you can actually loop it once and it gives it something really chic and interesting here. You can even tie it in the back. But what's nice about it is when you wear it this way, it's very by now wear now. We're in New York right now and it's very, you know, it's getting a little chilly outside, like disturbingly. So, which is great because then you can actually wear all the fall pieces that you've been collecting so far. So this is just a really nice, easy way to wear this but I don't look too overwhelming because I am wearing neutrals and I'm wearing very classic silhouettes. Yeah, and I think even, you know, when we do a modern piece, one of the things that we make sure of is that we have a nod to all those other things. So even though this is a really modern, dry, uh, man-made yarn up here, then you've got it mixed with a wool. So you've got that little bit of a classic element. The cable definitely gives it a classic element, but then someone's chopped off some baby sweater and laid it on top. So you've got that good element of weird. And then what's important of always, always in a creative pragmatist wardrobe is there is that element of chill to it. So I think being, it still has slouch, it still has ease. And the, you know, it, it's just like the perfect, like it's CMC all in one bundle here. Yeah, it's really great. And also just, the way this feels, it just feels very luxe and it's got that really nice texture play here, which kind of ties back into what we were talking about last week. And when we do go with the classic pieces, like you're wearing that, I'm wearing uh, one of our skirts from the new upcoming spring collection. But when we do go with the classic pieces, that's where we really err on the side of sharp and clean. Because when you're wearing something really modern, it's nice to have that kind of quiet downtime and then like all that focus is on the top. We have a few questions. Rain, we have a question. So the first Alice. question is, what size are you wearing, Dion? The question every time. <laughs> I am wearing a sample size four or a small um, in everything, actually. Yeah. Okay, and then the next question is from Sleep Time. What exactly makes pieces modern versus classic? Um, for me, what makes them modern is uh, there's always a weirdness to the proportion. Right, so the idea that this is like really kind of tiny and petite and then it's kind of shoved onto a big sweater, that makes it modern. Uh, texture is really important to being modern. So even with this layer, had it all been done in, um, in one yarn, it would have not had the level of modernity that, that, would, have, um, that would classify it as modern. And I'll give you an example here. This is, um, something that I did where just showing what it is when someone wears everything chill and you can see how it's just all one it's, it's just of one note right like everything is just chill and classic but it's like it's it's lovely it really is it's a lovely thing but if you saw it like it looks like someone just walked off of a Brunello Cuccinelli catalog and again that's what I'm saying like Style's subjective. It's about what makes you feel alive. I think Brunella Cuccinelli is beautiful when I see a woman head to toe in it. She's beautiful, but it's not my style. It doesn't feel modern and urban and cool to me. So that's why like, I love that beautiful classic chill, like a gray cashmere sweater, but being able to tie it in kind of a fucked up strange way, wearing it with something that is like kind of hard and modern, that mix is what feels um, youthful without feeling like ridiculously young. People ask me a lot about what is appropriate age-wise. And I always say we kind of dress as if you're forever in your 30s. If our, old, if our customer's in her 40s or 50s or 60s and beyond, she doesn't want to dress like she's 25. And if she's 20 something, she's kind of wanting to stand out from her peer set. So it's not about a style that is afforded to you because you've got bank to buy it. It's about a style that is afforded to you because you really understand the mix of that chill, modern, and classic and how it works for you, if that's what you're into. And if you're not into it, I, like I was joking earlier, you, you might have a better use of your time right now, but I'm glad you're here. Any more questions? Yeah, sorry. Okay, so the first question is, is this sweater that Dion um, was wearing available now? Yes, it just went live yesterday. Is your skirt leather? The skirt is 100% leather, yes. For spring, um, 
for spring, we were we just wanted to do some things that were purely lux, and um, and I love uh, vegan leather. I do. We use it a lot, but I, I wanted some pieces uh, that were 100% leather, and, and this one is. What are the most common colors in modern? Modern. Uh, the most common colors are the neutral colors, and then and then what is modern is when you wear a new color that's kind of a trend color. I mean the. The picture that I showed you earlier was Margiela, and that was all in red, right? And he was obviously having a red moment. Uh, and if you look at Runway's past, we have uh, we do focus on color. I love color, but I love color until I don't like the color. So sometimes modern pieces, uh, when we do them, we always, when we do color, that's why we go out of our way a lot of times to do them in a fabric that is very advanced and modern because sometimes a really pretty color, but if it's in just cotton or linen or something, that's when it becomes a little average and expected. So that's when we like to do it. It's something weird or nylon or something like that. Um, okay, so next we have Ashton. And Ashton is wearing the Liam blazer here. And so Ashton, for you in this, you would take up the sleeves just a little bit, right? You can. Yeah. Yeah. You, you like I, it I like long. it long. You like it? I like everything oversized. <laughs> All right, so there we go. And I, it's funny, someone wrote to me yesterday and they're like, I bought the Liam and I even sized down two sizes and it's still huge. It will always be huge. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, you could size down 10 sizes and it will still be big because that is very much the look. So we've got on the um, Liam blazer here, which we love. The modern aspect is that it's like two blazers stitched into one. It is, you've got it like two suits that have been ripped apart, sewn together. That's what makes it interesting. You also have the deconstructed collar here, which, you know, these are things that, um, Dion always calls them your Easter eggs. They're things that when you're sitting at your desk, maybe when you bought it, you knew you loved it, but then you're sitting there and you're like, oh, it's got this weird collar or this weird sleeve comes apart or something. And they're kind of those things that you can discover later on. And that's, to me, where clothing gets depth when they're things that you can discover and that you, they're not just like screaming at you from the rack of clothing. And then um, she's wearing this underneath with the Punto Milano uh, turtleneck uh, t-shirt. And I just had a client DM me about this yesterday saying, how glad she was that she bought it. She's an ad exec, she lives in Chicago, and this is like the top that she'll live in going to work, going to dinner, and on the weekend. And the reason why she'll live in it is because the fabric has like gravitas to it. It's like, it's strong, but it's not stiff. And, um, and when you get that perfect weight of fabric, that's, those are the tops that will last forever. It's, you know, don't get suckered in when you buy those like flimsy t-shirts and then they just look like a piece of shit, you know, after like wearing it for 20 minutes. So this one just like has good strength. And then, you know, for Ashton here, she's wearing the Lee's Liam with the nylon track pants that a lot of you guys have. And so when we talk about bringing modern things into your wardrobe, the easiest way to bring them in and make you really feel like yourself is to ground them in something that's become your classic. And this is, yes, like, I wear them at least once a week. <laughs> exactly, so that's a classic for you. People are, what size are you wearing? I'm wearing a 12 okay. and then a large and a, um, and a t-shirt. Great, so we are gonna be carrying through with these um, bottom pieces because we found that um, really to get people to try new things, you have to have that um, sense of familiarity because if you were wearing a Liam and like a big structured skirt and like a gigantic like weird boot mm -hmm. too much, too much. Yes. you'd be tipped over with my dirty yes. so that's good All right. thanks okay so actually this go ties back to the last question that Amy got about um, what makes a piece modern and I'm wearing all things that look relatively classic however they all have very modern elements like for instance, this white leather pencil skirt has this slit detail, so it almost looks like a culotte when you walk. And it also adds a little bit more comfort. And from a you know utilitarian standpoint, it just makes sense to like when you sit. I know when I have a nice fitted pencil skirt on that is fitting me like a glove. When I sit, having that split just gives me a little bit of extra, um, just a little bit of extra comfort, especially in an office. Also, this just seems like a classic black turtleneck. However, I actually have on. Like it's perfect for haircuts. I also put on this 
for red for completed work because we love you guys. It's also in our spring campaign and I'm wearing a little ear cuff. So I've been take, I basically take all three of these elements. They're all technically classic, but they have a modern spin. Even this brown classic shaft boot, having the kitten heel detail on it makes it have more of a modern take to it. Kind of gives a nod to the early 80s, which I love. But all of these pieces can operate as classic in your wardrobe, but can also operate as modern, depending on the permutation of outfit, which I think is so important. Yeah, so I think, you know, I had a lot of questions about um, how do you work in jewelry into being that modern element. And so she is wearing the pieces from Completed Works. Uh, that's by a designer named Anna Jewsbury out of uh, London. She's incredible. Um, she, she sold at Dover Street Market, matches fashion, um, and, and then her own website, completedworks.com. But you can see, like, that is what gives this layer of edge. And, and honestly, when you're this sleek, you could be wearing like a little diamond sword through your ear or something mm -hmm. like, it really gives you permission to kind of go for it on the jewelry. And when the jewelry is, you know, I always tell people too, like, if you're going to spend money on jewelry as well, spend money on the interesting stuff. Like don't, don't bifurcate it and be like, okay, if I spend money on jewelry, it's going to be the Cartier, love bracelet or like these Tiffany stud earrings like if you're gonna spend the big bucks on the jewelry go with something like weird and fabulous from uh, Gaia Raposi or someone like that or get the you know uh, completed works has fine and costume so like you'll live in that forever For and sure. some people see the weird jewelry too as like a trend and the thing is it's not because you're gonna lean on that weird jewelry every time that you might just wanna even go to the grocery store and wear like a clean turtleneck and a pair of jeans. When you put on that weird piece of jewelry, you're gonna feel cool and you're gonna feel like modern and up to date all of a sudden. So don't think of it as trend items. Think of them as, again, the pieces you're gonna wear over and over again to make you feel uh, cool and young. We have some questions. First question, what's the chill outfit in Beyonce? The chill part of my outfit, the boots, and the, color. and the color is chill. It's just neutral. Like if you were in red, pink, and orange, like all of a sudden it would not chill. I'd also be fired. Um, <laughs> but um, also, I'm going to show how to make a more obvious chill element to this outfit. So I'm going to come back in a second. Okay. But also, too, um, one more thing on the chill element. Putting the ponytail through the hole, or if you don't have a ponytail and you've got short hair, your like rain over here with her fabulous like sleek hair then having that hole in the back of the neck like that's chill and you'll have a co-worker walk up to you and she'll be like oh my god your sweater's ripped and you'll be like no it's not can you talk about using the watch as an accessory um yes well <laughs> i definitely am because i have no idea what time it is i haven't wound this watch up for years now i use my iphone for that um, so that's what it is. It's an accessory for me. Um, oh, and also on the accessories too. This is from these Russian girls, uh, Gatum Mac. I'll give you that later in the uh, final thing, but it's just a handcuff. And I've had this now for about eight years. So it's a classic, right? But it's not. So this is like the ultimate uh, Tibby creative pragmatist jewelry, but not designed by me, designed by two Russian girls. So. I actually made it a little bit more chill by adding a little dose of, you know, cork to it by having the socks with these little fuzzy shoes. That makes it look a little bit more chill. Also, if you want to add a more obvious chill element, you could do something a little bit more oversized. Um, so I think the socks and the shoes give it a weird modern. Yeah, it's it's very it. modern. Yeah. But if I take this and I have it buttoned over, you've got your chill, you've got your modern, and you've got your classic going. Now, personally, since I've got a lot of textures going on, I would remove. You can keep that one. Yeah, one can stay. One yeah. can stay. She can stay. So, yeah. yeah. So, if I do this, then now I've got just a little subtle hint of jewelry and shine. And then I've got my little socks and heels. So, now I've got chill. You've got two classic pieces on, and then you've got a little bit of modernity here. You're, You're also like coat. super fashion at this point. I am. Also, this is the large in the coat. Um, you know, I would probably be wearing a small in real life, but also works, you know. You can tell it, like, doesn't make much of a difference. It doesn't make a difference. Just like a big coat, guys. Like, I promise. If you order and you're like, it's a big coat, then yeah. you'll be if like, you want the Liam to that's be correct. fitted, just don't buy the Liam. You know, yeah. like, it's supposed to have that beautiful yeah. drop shoulder. You know? Yeah, if you want to buy the fitted Liam, buy the 
spread. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Buy a different jacket, for sure. Uh, okay, so we've got Ash in here. She's wearing the same sweater now that Dion was wearing. And again, like with the nylon, like it's totally approachable. Yeah. I mean, it, it gives it like a casual chill element with like a luxe sweater. Yeah. And you're wearing completed works also. Yes. On there. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I'm not paid by Completed Works, but when I do love things, especially when they're independent designers, we will talk it up, okay? Mm -hmm. um, all right, so so she, so she, all right. So um, the, what I wanna answer is a question that I had received in DMs last weekend that really made me wanna dive into this subject today, is can you substitute something in the chill modern classic equation? And the answer is yes, you can. But what, the only thing that you can substitute is the word classic, because the absolute fundamental part of being a creative pragmatist is that sense of chill, that sense of ease, and, um, and then that sense of modernity. So for instance, someone asked, can I be um, edgy or sexy, whatever, wearing a motorcycle jacket? So what I would say is in the creative pragmatist world with a motorcycle jacket, yes, you can bring in that edginess, but uh, we need to strip out the sexy element because what we need you to be is creative, I'm sorry, yeah. We need you to be chill, modern, and edgy, okay? So now, you guys as consumers, like all these stores fuck with you guys big time. And here's why. Like. So here's the acne motorcycle jacket, okay? I love acne, and this is how acne shows it on their uh, website, right? But then this is how like other websites show it. Like all of a sudden they've taken, um, Johannes is at home from acne, his vision, and then they put it with like this little, you know, little skinky little fitted jean and little t-shirt and no, but they just, they mess it up. And so what happens is if this is the visual that you keep seeing online, then you get confused and you think, well, if I'm a creative pragmatist and I love to be like, I, how do I ever wear a motorcycle jacket? So go to places that um, like acne, right? It's chill, it's modern. He puts it with like a big pant. Um, he gives it a lot of ease and he usually messes with the proportions. So if you're gonna be wearing like a fitted little motorcycle jacket, what do you know about proportions? You're not gonna be wearing a little fitted t-shirt and fitted jeans, that's just a fitted like hot mess. So what you wanna do is like if, if Ashton had been wearing the fitted motorcycle jacket, but then the big nylon cargo trousers and then like a chill sandal, like that's perfect, right? So substitute classic for the edgy part, but keep it modern and keep it chill and you'll be good. Okay, so. Okay, first of all, I have to talk about the skirt because it's so good. And it's the ultimate modern skirt. It's this beautiful bonded, just really nice Italian wool that I absolutely love. It's got this asymmetrical hemline and it's got this really cool flare detail. So when you walk, it just looks really, you know, chic and amazing. So I'm actually wearing this back to a t-shirt with shoulder pads in it. This is called the Punto Milano, which is also a really nice, fine Italian cotton. So it's, I still have a lot of structure and modernity here with the shoulder pad, but if I wanted to make it a little bit more cleaner and classic, it's like a basic t-shirt, I can take the shoulder pads out. And then I've got, you know, my sock and heel here. So now I've got a few modern elements on. So what I need to do is first is take out the shoulder pads. If you want to. If I want. Because I always love a shoulder pad. I, like in real life, I'm not taking the shoulder pad out. But but what's, what, what is unique in here in this outfit and, and what we strive to do in every piece that we design is everything's got a bit, big, a bit of a mix of chill, modern, and classic. So, I mean, the, the classics, the skirt is in a classic fabrication and it's in a classic color, but the fact that it's bonded makes it very modern and then the detail makes it super modern. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the length makes it really chill. If it had been like a short little mini skirt, number one, you may not be wearing it. And number two, it just wouldn't be as chill as it could be, so. So I just wanna yeah. come up close so you can really see the material. Also, fun thing about it is you have asymmetrical pockets too, which kind of gives a really interesting detail. You've got this one here, and then you've got one here. So it's, just makes it a little interesting. zipper in the back, which gives 
A lot of times when we have things like an oatmeal colorway that's a little bit of a heathered fabric, then when you have that exposed zipper, it gives it just that little bit of toughness. Um, and then as the skirt is feminine, so doing the men's wear welt pockets, again, gives it, those are the things that like, it's feminine because it's a skirt and because it has fluidity, but then we dial it back right away so that it feels more balanced for us. Oh, I just see someone has a question. I think it's from a bond about the socks. Yes. Um, these are just Dwayne Reed trouser socks. They come in a little egg. <laughs> You can just, they were 99 cents. They're like a dollar, like, you know. Um, that's what's great about a lot of these things that we use is like little styling hacks are just all really easy pieces you can find at a drugstore because we actually are next door to a drink read, so it makes sense. But um, I'm also gonna show you how to layer this and keep all of those elements going with the coat. Um, and just one note on the hosiery, and a lot of people ask me about socks as well. If you let functionality and pragmatism be your guide, ultimately that's going to take you to a really good place. You know, it was cold outside today. I didn't want to show my feet and my toes. The gray socks were perfect. I'm comfortable. So I don't know. I mean, maybe someone may not approve of this. I'll probably hear about it later on on Insta. But I'm really cozy. I'm warm. It works. Like, let that functionality be your guide because really being uncomfortable is the worst thing for creative pragmatism. It makes you fidgety and you second guess yourself and but yeah. Obsessed. Okay. This is this is my expensive lady look of the week. Um, so I've got just a t-shirt, the same skirt, but I actually switched back to the tall brown shaft boots. And then now I have on this beautiful Lux double face rolling gore coat. So before I talk about this coat, we've discussed this before. This is the one that I wore back to the Angora dress. It's just really beautiful and chill, but look, it's got the little car wash detail at the bottom, so it adds a little bit of modernity as well. And it's just a really elegant Angora coat. Yeah, because, you know, one of the things, like, when you when you do appreciate luxury, you know, like, I mean, yeah, I appreciate Hermes, and, like, I love luxury, but ugh, you want to just make it a little younger and a little more fun, and I think sometimes people think like oh to make something more younger or more youthful it means you cut it off really short or you plunge the neckline and it's not you just fuck it up a little bit you give it a weird detail and then it younger becomes a state of mind rather than like a physical age and and this coat like i would argue if if you were younger and you knew someone with bank like this would be the the one thing you want them to buy because you're going to wear it in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your, you know, on up, exactly. up, up, up. It's an investment piece for yeah. the younger girls. And, you know, wearing it back to denim and a tall boot is very chic as well. But, you know, this, all of this stuff is stuff that I feel like everyone at any age in our office would wear. Yeah, really I did. Where was I? I don't even know where I've been the last couple of weeks, but someone had, I was doing a Q&A and someone was like, you know, how do I make sure I don't dress like my daughter. And I was like, you know what? Get a better dressed daughter. Like, like you can dress oh like God. your daughter. Just make sure that you're all dressed really cool. Well, she wants to true. dress like the daughter more like that mean girl. Like, yeah, um, I know what you mean. That spirit from you know, Mean Girls. daughter in the fitting room. Yes. Yeah, or no, more like the like Juicy Couture, like what's her name in Mean Girls. But um, that is something. It's just timeless, all right? So this is my really clumsy way of saying that. Yeah, can you show the coat closer? Oh, yeah, of course. But it's so true, though. It's like, youth doesn't, like, youthfulness is a state of mind, so you can really wear anything, you know? And also classic pieces are forever. So I feel like the younger set, if they want something that's going to live with them, but it still looks interesting, yeah. that's it. This is it. And Rosie Ward has a question. Would you wear that with sneakers, the skirt? Definitely. I would definitely wear this with sneakers and like a cashmere sweater. Sneakers or, um, yeah, something a little polished on top, like yeah. a cashmere sweater and then sneakers. Definitely. Actually, I have a cashmere sweater on with a sneaker, so I'll show it. With sneakers with a little bit of sole. Yeah, not like, like a Stan Smith. Like no, a, definitely not. So like edge to it. Yeah, like not a gazelle, not a Stan Smith. You want yeah. something with some chunk, like maybe like Stella McCartney or something like yeah. that. Yeah. That'll give you what you need. Or those JW or, or the old numbers. Celine ones, because I keep looking at those on the real real and they look so good with like a midi skirt and like a cashmere sweater. The ones that Vince knocked off a million times? No, no, not those. No. Okay. All right. 
Yeah. If I show them to you, you're gonna be like, saying oh, it like oh, it is, yeah. right yeah, here. Not those. I know what you're talking about. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> delete this later. I mean, you can't delete. It's live. Just edit it out. This <laughs> is between us. Okay. All right. Um, so Ashton's got on the bonded pant here. Last week, Dion had this pant on in black and in loaded green in the Merriam Twill, and then we also did it in the bonded. Super luxe, like, yeah, super dope. Uh, and the color is yeah. so rich. So she's wearing the um, coupe alpaca <laughs> and loaded. Um, I'm wearing like a size smaller than I would normally wear, but um, it still works. And it has the little color options. And then you're wearing the Logan boots from a couple of years ago. Yes, my personal boots. <laughs> we are, well, I just so you them. know, we're bringing those back next year. So, um, like I said, the things that we love, the things that work, we're going to be bringing them back and um, in interesting new colors. So you'll be happy about that because they'll be worn out by then. Exactly. Maybe the not because they're taking this to last forever. The collier would That's also work with us, which is coming out yes. in a few weeks. Yes. And I like it that you made it fancy, like the collier. Yeah. Like the collier? <laughs> the collier. Yeah. That looks really good. Also, I'm sorry, one more thing I just want to say. With with all of this coverage down here, this neck is really nice. Mm -hmm. Having this open. So, okay. And once you um, get to these stair steps of really understanding your fashion, you can figure out, too, how to fiddle with things in your own closet when... Um, when something bothers you. And so, like I was saying, she's got all that coverage, so that neck being open feels really good. And it's funny, when I was getting uh, dressed in my office, um, I was fiddling with this shirt because I had my hair down and I was like pretty dark and heavy around here. So I just took the collar and turned it under. So this shirt actually has a shirt collar, right? But these are the things that like, when you know that something bothers you, something feels off because it's just too much going on, just flip your collar under, right? Just turn it into a little Mandarin collar. You have permission to do whatever you want with your clothing. You bought it, you paid for it, you own it. So like if you want to get rid of the collar, and there are even shirts too where the collar starts to bug me and I just chop it off. And even this shirt has the deconstructed weird sleeve so it's shipped like this where oh wait yeah it's shipped like this and then i just wanted like a little bit of a bigger opening again i was feeling a little dark so i wanted to have something where a little more skin could come through so being able to manipulate the clothing is really important to me i think that uh, just makes things last longer it gives things a different look this is a crop top i've just got the front of it tucked in here um, it can be worn out. That's how we show it on the website. When will this be available? Excuse me? When will this be available? This office? is available. Uh, Maggie's yeah. wearing it on the website. Yeah, it's, it's the Eco Poplin. Yeah. The Eco Poplin crop top. This is how it looks um, on the website. I think we showed it with jeans or something. Yeah, yeah. So we've done it. It should be on the first page of New Arrivals. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I just didn't show the next one. Okay. <laughs> This, for those of you who didn't tune in last week, how dare you, but also this is the Boucle Alpaca neck pillow. So, would you around for me, Ashley? So, you, you have this little detail here that keeps it on. This is obviously something that you want to use for travel, however, um, it's something that you can even use as a work from home. Because sometimes work from home for me is just like... Or if you take a little nap at your desk. Yeah. That's oh, what I use. Are we allowed to do <laughs> Fine. And, and then also, to Amy's point about manipulating what you wear. I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna show again from last week just because I just want to drive this point home and how versatile the alpaca is. This is the same sweater just in a contrast color. You can wear this as a scarf as well. So you just take it and you fasten it with the slits in the sleeve. Just like that. So those shades look so pretty together. So what is great is you're getting extra functionality out of your sweater. You're using it as a scarf, but the shades, like they're just all tonal, but because of, you've got the you've got the shine on the boots. So that's what's keeping it really modern. And I always remember when I worked in this clothing store when I was in um, high school, there was this woman, she was like some Swedish woman and she was always wearing all shades of brown. 
And she was like, the trick is just have one color in your closet. And I was like, okay. And then I did that and I was like, <sighs> like I felt, yeah, oh, you know? And what I realized is what we talked about last week is um, making sure that you have the different textures because when you have, when you wear something all in the same shades and it's not all the same color, but in the same shades, making sure that you've got like that shiny crop here, you've got the set strength of the bonded fabric and then you are, um, Oh, it says pause, okay. And then you mix it up with all the woolly, uh, great textures there. That's what's keeping it really young and modern. And remember, don't give me grief. When I said old, I meant it as a state of mind, not as a way that you look, okay? We know that, right? All right. Um, and then this is that same skirt, so the cashmere sweater. Mm -hmm. If I wore- Recycled. Yes, it's recycled, recycled cashmere. Yes, I have to talk about that because it is, made out of recycled yarns, and it's actually a beautiful gray melange. So if you see it up close, you see flecks of white. So back to the chill modern classic ratio, like this sweater is chill, it's cropped, it's just easy, it's nice and soft, and but it's relatively a classic silhouette despite, you know, our, you know, how we like to shape things. It's still very classic, but it's modern as well. Yeah, and I, I will say, because it does veer on the side of classic, when I put it on, I really needed to push the bottom. Like yeah. I, I felt, I just, I had to push it. So I think like pushing it with this skirt is what keeps it like right on its edge. If I were to wear that to, even to the grocery store, I'd wear it with like the nylon, uh, the crispy nylon jogger, but then I'd wear like a loafer with it and maybe the earring, so. Exactly, because like if you do just like a regular slim high-waisted pant, it doesn't, it just feels, to average and that's we don't want you to look average we want you to look amazing so you know even with this skirt that she's wearing would be so chic and you can even pair that with the sneaker yeah. too and it kind of takes it and makes it very modern chill and classic all at the same time yeah and here again this one looks great with sneakers as well and then but the tall boots also puts it in that in-between zone where it, with the right jewelry you can even wear this to an event too mm -hmm. cool. all right so um we talked about CMC, Chill Modern Classic. Then we talked about Chill Modern with Edge. So the other question that I get from a lot of you guys is, what if I like things really feminine? So now we're gonna talk about Chill Modern and Feminine. So um, I'm showing you like a purely feminine look. This is from um, Alberta Ferretti. So again, this is not about a judgment on style, right? I mean, Alberta Ferretti, great designer, great house. So I'm certainly, not saying that there isn't style there, there is. But to be so full on feminine here, you've got feminine chiffon, it's in a feminine color, it's in a, she's got feminine hair, she's got the like waves going on, like all of that is just femme, 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 femme. And it's someone's look, but it's not my look, it's not balanced enough. So here is a picture from one of our, um, from our new fall campaign. And I think this group went up as well. It is a sheer feel coupe uh, fabric that is just beautiful. But then we've got her wearing it with a gigantic sweatshirt and leather gloves and then the weird socks and the shoes. So she is chill, she is modern, and she's feminine. And because those, that classic can really be substituted out for feminine or for edgy, that is when... Um, you know, just even for as a designer, as a as a line here, it's important that with my design team that we have that flexibility to move within that aesthetic as well. Uh, but as long as it's always chill and as long as it's always modern, and then always for sure we are all up in the sales team's ass to make sure that the stores who carry it and photograph it have that attitude with it. Um, okay, now Ashton is. She's thrown on, um, this is not one of our fall tops, this is one of our menswear tops from this spring, but it's in the chalky drape, and a lot of you guys love that chalky drape fabric because it's just so freaking like, it's, it's like, it's so like easy to wear during the day, and then it can be dressed up at night, and it really just, and it's year round, it's like a 12 month fabric. Um, but this texture is so nice with the pants as well. And so let me ask you a question. You just left this open, and this looks really good. Yes. Well, it's a men's cut, so yeah. it's cut a little bit more straight. Uh huh. Obviously, I'm a little bit curvier, so it kind of just gives that natural 
Okay, Plus so doesn't Yeah, so I think this is another one of those things where, um, you know, back in the day when you had a lot of customers in the store, and, and now you don't, right? It's a lot of phone calls, but people would come out and they'd be like, "Is it supposed to do this? Is it supposed to do this?" And a lot of times it's like, "No, maybe not." But, but like, who's to say? Because that looks amazing. I yeah, love that. Cool. And I took like took one side in. I love it just like I could see someone coming out and be like I can't button it I'm just I can't button it and it's like so what because that looks insane that looks great that's good thank you I want to see your shoes you want to see my shoes oh yeah these are old Tibby shoes I'm thinking about doing them again next year I think we might have the zombie on end of season sale Andre uh, yeah that's yeah. Andre yeah. yeah Andre Anyways, he's good with a pair of socks. Um, it's a year-round shoe that way, except when it's snowy. It's not yeah. <laughs> For sure. It's not good in the snow. So oh. I wanted to talk about how to pair all of these pieces that are very like chic and elevated and interesting. So this skirt is actually culotte underneath. Cute, right? You've got a collage detail here. You've got your gingham and you've got your black tropical wool. And then you have all of these, which are actually all from recycled fabric. So we didn't waste fabric, we repurposed them and made them into this, you know, beautiful skirt situation. I mean, so comfortable. So this is a really great workwear staple. And I'm just wearing that clean black turtleneck again. And then this beautiful, like Italian wool vest. It actually has a little open back detail. So you actually have adjustable buttons here so that you can make this a little bit more fitted or a little more oversized. So it just creates a really cool silhouette in the back. So when you're wearing something like this, it's just best to stick with neutrals. Like the second you start adding brights to this, no. it looks so, no. it just looks a little too, I don't know. It doesn't no. make, it just makes it look really, just not luxe and elevated. But if you do it with classic black and you make the focal point this collage, the only other thing that I have on is this brown boot. And that kind of makes it a little less harsh and aggressive. Say if I were wearing a black combat boot or something, I feel like it's a little bit more directional, but having the brown shaft boot actually makes us have the element of chill here. So you've got two modern pieces on, you've got a classic piece underneath, and then the boot chills it out because of the color, which I think also, just remember, sometimes color can make things chill. And here in this brown, it really chills out everything else that could get aggressive if I were wearing like a black shoe, right? Yeah, I think, but I also think the key here to uh, keeping the modernity is uh, the skirt has pleats. So there's the skirt, the kula. But, so that's a modern, I mean, that's a classic element. And then you've got very classic menswear shirting in there. Mm -hmm. So this is where like, first of all, if you were wearing a cable sweater, it would look a little too many textures and chaotic. Yes. And then if you were wearing a bright colored sweater, all of a sudden these menswear elements that are very chic and modern would take on a very preppy tone to it. And you would not be happy. No. I, I would not be happy. Um, the other great thing with this is it's actually adjustable here. So Dion's wearing the size four. Um, you should be wearing it too, because if yeah. I were doing a fitting, I would be like, oh, let's take this up an inch. An inch is the uh, difference in the grading on the waistband. Um, so, but you can. I just want bring them lower little. too, and then make that a different look too. Yeah. But yeah, naturally, I'd probably wear it too. But the four still works if I want to wear it a little lower. Yeah. You know, I feel like Amy, you've been talking about how you're feeling more into things that are lower recently. Yeah. So, but yeah, and I just want to show you the top, just up close, so you guys can get the details here. So you have all these little menswear-inspired fabrics, and then our virgin wool blend, tropical wool on the inside. And where the pleating is quite feminine, on the back side then she's got the menswear welts back here on the pocketing. So really having that true menswear detail is important there. Also, the, the base cloth here is a tropical wool. So tropical wool, it's very lightweight. It's a 12 monther unless you're on the beach in Bali. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the shirting though, this is a, cotton, a men's cotton shirting. So even in April or in May, whatever, you could be wearing like a little black tank top mm -hmm. and a pair of black flat slides. And it would be very cute. And you're cute and you're not like sweating your ass off. 
True, very true. Yeah. It's like, just keep it clean with whatever you're gonna wear this with. I don't even mind doing like an oversized men's button down or something mm -hmm. and like a white or something like that. And it I just wear a gray sweatshirt. Gray sweatshirt too, yeah. yeah. Just keep it neutral, otherwise it gets chaotic. Like you don't wanna match to any of the colors here. It's just not, yeah. So don't be throwing a green sweater on with it and then tagging me and being like, hey. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you can tag me. I just might delete it. Okay, I'm not just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not really. Um, okay. So now um, Ashton here, she's wearing the balloon pants in the uh, gay plaid. And then she's got the sweater that, so Dion had the recycled cashmere on in the turtleneck. And now Ashton's wearing it in the oversized crew neck, which uh, feels a little less classic to me than the turtleneck did because the proportions on this are bigger and this the cutout on the sleeve is a little more exaggerated there. And then you're wearing the croc boots with it, which just goes with everything. Always. Oh, that looks great. So I just wanted to show, since you mentioned gray sweatshirt, this is that featherweight cashmere sweater. This is about as light as you can really go with this. Um, Color-wise? Yeah, color-wise. Yeah. I think just Heather Gray is about as light as you can go. Also, just to show you, because this is a great sweater, this is that one with the cutouts. It comes in blush, too. But I would wear I would wear a white, oversized poplin mints For sure. down with the sleeves. Oh. Definitely. No, that would look really chic. But I don't think I'd wear a white sweater. But then I don't wear white sweaters. So. I wouldn't do a white sweater either. Yes. I think just having it here. And if you want to keep it a little advanced, bring the arms out. Cool. Yeah. But also, what about a white chalky drape? Like if it was just clean white. The only thing is, I love chalky drape. I was just like waxing on about it a minute ago with um, Ashton. But I do find that chalky drape works best for me when I wear it with something that is a real different texture. And when something is based a little bit more in the tropical wool, it feels a little mature. I see, yeah, I agree. So, yeah. I mean, like, it'll do in a pinch, but yeah, I'm not gonna, like, You're write, not gonna a, I'm not gonna write a post look. about it. Yeah. Um, okay, so the warnings of the classics, right? So we all can appreciate Hermes and the amazing luxury of it. But when you're head to toe classic, this is what you get. You get this chick on this chair who sold her picture to Shutterstock, so I am allowed to use it and not like get too much grief for it. But, anyways, um, again, she's nice, but really, like, do we care about that style? No, because it's not style. She's got on nice clothing. So, you know, again, just taking, like, if you've got the classic blue shirt here then wearing it with something like a pair of black patent leather pants and an easy slide is what keeps you balanced, chill, modern, and classic. Can I have a question? Why don't you wear white sweaters? Why don't I wear white sweaters? You know, I think, um, I guess it just depends. Like if I was wearing this black skirt, actually I would wear the white cut out bag. Would you keep the and I would keep, I don't know, I went through, this was a tricky one today because I, when I put on a couple different um, tops with this skirt and I started out first with a light blue um, Oxford and then I was really happy with this whole look, but then my shoes were the tan color and it went, I did that like sandwich yeah. that we said that it just broke it up so I didn't like that. So if I'd had the, we did these shoes also, um, the yeah, the burgundy ones are online. So this yeah. is called the Andre. What's great about this heel is it actually, it looks high, but it's not. I think it's like um, just under three inches, I think. It's super, super, super wearable. Uh, unless you are Tracy, our head of design, who says that's crazy and it's not wearable because she only wears flat. So if you're that type of person, it's not wearable, but three inches to me, totally doable. And it's got this easy like footbed and it comes in burgundy. So if I'd had a darker shoe on, I would have worn like yeah. a white sweater Thank or a lighter knows. sweater, but it broke it up too much. Everybody is asking me about the skirt and when they'll be able to buy it. The skirt is going to be available in January. So one of the new things that we are going to be doing is we have taken some of our favorite pieces in the line 
those pieces that when we did the discussion around the closets and we said that there are those things called the woofs, the without fails, that no matter what you've got, no matter how shitty your day is, if you just pull out those items, you know that they're going to work. Or no matter what you bought that's new, it should always work with those woofs. And, and when it does work with the woofs, it tells you you're gonna be able to wear it so much. So in January, we are gonna be bringing out those favorite pieces. If you look at Vogue.com, or I think we might have the images on our own website too right now, but the new spring images, um, we painted our house orange. It's still orange right now. And I have to say what seemed so great, like three weeks ago, I'm like, oh my God, this house is orange. But um, you'll see in front of the orange house, we have the models lined up and a lot of them are wearing the new fundamental pieces. So um, these are the pieces that you'll have forever. You'll have them forever until we really start to hate them, but I don't think we'll hate them because they're things like the nylon cargo pants and nylon joggers. Does it have pockets? And does it have pockets? <laughs> Hello, does a bear do that in the woods? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's kombucha's like <laughs> weird. It's making me, anyways, yes. Two big pockets. Pockets that are there for design and do not go shoving stuff into them because then you look crazy. Um, okay, so now we've got um, the coat duel. <laughs> coat pays off. Uh, but this is the perfect coat, you guys. It is big, it is huge, it's amazing. It. Um, it's one that in Instagram, I've talked a lot in stories about this turtle <laughs> shape. You get this nice little turtle. Don't we all want to look like a turtle? Um, so it's got this nice little turtle shape in the back. It is a bonded fabric and, um, and it has guts, okay? And your coat should have guts. When it's, when it's on the hanger, um, it, it can drape on the hanger like that beautiful blue one that Dion had on earlier that was, you know, that kind of drapier fabric. But when it's that like strong coat, it should stand up on its own on the hanger. That is like, it's just, it's so modern and cool and edgy that way. And like you're just wearing the jeans and sneakers and the faux leather shirt with it. And it's, it's like style, Yeah, you know? To, it makes a basic outfit, a normal outfit, elevated to and still casual. And coats really do complete the outfit. We talked a lot about them last week, you know, finding those right coats. And, you know, when you see like that amazing Scandi woman walking around, she's always got on like the best coat action. And it really just does complete a whole outfit. I'm obsessed with them. and. You know, it's probably half the reason why I still have a clothing line today is solely so that I can keep making coats and, and <laughs> just to keep making just blazers. Keep whatever. making blazers and coats. That's <laughs> all I want to do. Yes. Um, and then you're wearing the jeans that are coming back. Yes, they'll be recut in a few weeks. Yeah, actually. yeah. So uh, I don't, I don't know if they've all been reserved up yet. But if you guys reach out to. Um, at Ashton or Teresa or personal stylist and again I'll give you guys a list at the end here but make sure you do um, reserve one of these because I, I, I want to say we only cut like 33 pieces so yeah. what and we it? still have a few we actually still have like three sizes at the boutique okay. so. yeah so reach out to the boutique because a lot of times you'll see it's also that online and then these guys have like squirreled away a few nuts in the back there. And I'm like, yeah. hey. Um, I also cool. want to talk about this crop shirt too, because this is that DMF free faux leather that I was talking about. So it's chemical free faux leather, and it's a lightweight leather, so you can really wear it for a transitional time, and then play around with layering later as well. And in the crop, it's just that, that cool workman detail, but then it being cut off makes it just really chic for playing with proportions. Wait, what was the huh? size? Size. Yes. Um, the coat was a medium. Um, this is a large and then a 32 in the jeans. Cool. Thank you. And then a little bit more about this coat. It's actually made from recycled fabrics. And then you've got several different modern elements to it because you have utilitarian pockets. 
It's just a really chic coat. And I mean, how many pockets do you need? It's perfect. You can fit the oversized iPhone here, just FYI, super important stuff. Because Amy, you know, eventually we'll have a pocket the size of an iPad. It's coming. <laughs> But you got the side pockets. Yes, yeah, so you have the regular standard side pockets too. Yeah. So you have, I mean, you don't really even need a bag if you wore this coat, to be honest. Right, and the thing <laughs> is, like, the pockets are the detail. So what happens is a lot of times, like, a coat will have this pocket, but, like, you don't stand around like a rabbit all the time, right? So even if you got that front pocket, you still need the side pockets to, like, you know, give you some chill, be able yeah. to, you know. This is the only coat yeah. that fits all of your PPE by the way. Yes. Your mask here, your ID, your everything. Little sanitizer. Also, it has that custom metal ring that we love. And then underneath, I'm actually contrasting it with this. This is our... Wait, I'm sorry. I do want to show you also, make sure that your coats look just as beautiful on the inside. Okay? So, this is, this means it's the good stuff. The, the name of the coat? Yeah. Um, the really good coat? I'm not... Oh, I'll tell you right now. I'm not sure. Um, but guys, do you know? Do look for the inside for how things are made, and and you'll feel better for it. Um, and the great thing too is, you know, these investments can be made over time. You know, just get one great thing right now, and then get another great thing next year, and just keep adding up over time. And you know, even going back to the jewelry discussion, like this was not cheap. This uh, the handcuff. But I bought it 10 years ago, and this was a gift to myself at a big birthday that I had. And, you know, the jewelry that I bought, it's been every year, and maybe every two years I buy myself something nice. So it's not like I went shopping one day and I came home with like $50,000 worth of jewelry. Um, but if you buy this good stuff, you just buy like a piece and a piece and a piece over time. But to reiterate, a lot of people get fooled that the good stuff the things that you buy over time have to be these like bizarro classics that you know you've been told like if you're going to invest in something make sure it's a classic it's it's your version of make sure it's something that you love and that you'll wear all the time and then make sure it's good can you put the coat on Amy? oh yeah the coat is also called the seymour cocoon shaped coat yeah and yeah. it's a size small which is what i would wear and it looks so and good with your outfit so. love it I live in this. This is when I'm really happy that I own the company. Because <laughs> so I know I'm getting it. one. <laughs> oh, I know. I know exactly where this one's going. I'm getting one Straight for sure. to Greenwich. <laughs> um, it's really good, guys. Yeah. It's a good leg. Can't wait to wear it. I'm ready for this year to be fucking over. <laughs> I know. We can wear all our clothes, you know? Exactly. So this is the um, Felix check. It's the baby doll dress. But it's definitely so much more than that because you have a lot of versatile ties here. It makes it modern. And then the menswear inspired check keeps it from looking very sweet. It just keeps it very modern and chill. So you can take that necktie here and just fold it over like that. Also, again, our dresses always have pockets. So it's just a really chic, easy dress to wear with top boots. Oh. So cute. I love this. <laughs> Favorite. And again, in the spirit of wearing what you own, so, you know, Ashton's just taken the light bulb dress. I, I think we have a better name for it. Illumi the Illuminati. The Illuminati. The Lumiere dress. Um, and she's just opened it up and worn it over jeans. And, um, and really, this is in the spirit of, we didn't photograph it like this. She just walked out of the closet like this, but it looks really good because you like it and it looks great and you can tell that you like it. It looks great. I love like dresses yeah. specifically styled over these jeans. Yeah. I feel like the bottom and the, the length really, it always looks great. <laughs> so good. Cool, I love that. And that's in a canvas as well. And so, you know, if she is wearing like the coat here, it's something really nice and bright and fresh underneath the coat. Um, and the weight of this canvas can really get you through a lot of months. It's one of those perfect solutions in uh, for like September and February dressing when you want to keep things a little bit lighter and not sweat yourself to death, um, but that you still have a nod to the season of the red. It's really a great construction, like even the, the details on the sleeves, like I feel really good putting it on. Yeah, because it's, you know, these are the things, it's this, 
the bell sleeve here with the top stitching is what keeps its shape. And then you've got the narrow shoulders. So um, all of this is just conspiring to give like all this entrance. So that was great on you. And then you're wearing my favorite long shorts. I love these. So this is that um, Atticus Helms tooth. You guys have seen the belted version of this pant. This one is the elastic version. So it's really easy, honestly a really great work from home pant because it gives you a little bit of luxe material and then it's also substantial, but it's also something you could literally lounge around and it's so easy. Now we did have a similar style for spring, but this style is a little wider in the leg um, and it has a little more ease to it. So, super chill. So I'm mean, just wearing it with the pop wing with the reverse sleeve. I think I showed this last week too, but it just has that clean pop wing blouse that you always need in your wardrobe, but then it has the backwards like French cuff sleeve detail on both sides. And then it's got a really great shape here so that it's easy to do half of you. And just made very easy. And so what's really special about this is everything that Dion's wearing is completely approachable. And if anyone was with me right now and they were like, I can't pull that off, I'd be like, bullshit, you can pull that off and just stop it, you know, because you look great, it's totally approachable. And, um, and it doesn't, uh, it's not crazy price. And I think that's another thing that is really important to me is that you really can get these luxury fabrics, things that are really well made, but it doesn't have to be crazy priced. And I think that's one of the things that's always been difficult if you are a creative pragmatist and you love that mix of modernity, people charge a ton for that modernity. And the reason why they charge a ton for it a lot of times is because there's not a huge market for it, right? So that's why when you see really well-priced stuff, it just tends to be like dumb as hell, ugh, so average because they sell tons of it and there you go. So, you know, I say this every time, but we are a smaller company. Um, I am very comfortable cutting uh, very small units in things, sometimes 50 pieces, sometimes 60 pieces. It's not for everyone, but I really do enjoy having this outlet to show you all why it can be for you because I know a lot of women like me and like Dion, you were frustrated until you learned how to really like find and express your style and to know that you know, that you love modernity, but you don't have to like step off the deep end is really comforting. And I know from a lot of our customers, you tell me that you do want to stand out, but you still want to fit in, right? So this is like that, that balance and it's not fitting in to hide. It's just fitting in in a way that we find very pragmatic and you know, useful, which is redundant. Yeah. Elevated, but just appropriate for every setting. I think it's the most important part. Yeah. Okay, so Dion's going to try on a few more things for you guys. Do we have any more questions over there, Rain? Um, a lot of requests for more Tibby stores. <laughs> Honestly, more Tibby stores. In Paris, in South Africa, they want Tibby. You guys, I know, i got to figure this out. Um, we are looking at trying to figure out how to ship better and easier in Europe and um, Printemps in Paris does carry the collection. Uh, they do make an amazing assortment. And I think that um, because you are asking this though, if you guys do like type up where you wanna know um, what countries will, when I do my summary at the end here, I will do a laundry list of, uh, of the countries because we have quite a lot of penetration in China and in Australia, New Zealand places like that, but Europe is, has always been a bit of an anomaly for us. So, um, you know, and also if you are writing from the European market, tell me your favorite stores and then I'll have our sales team like go out and uh, get on them. Yeah. So this looks great too. Dion's got on the uh, Stripe. I love this top because it has this classic menswear elements, but it's just so much more interesting. You have this, just that you can be worn down and just very easy like this, but you have this button detail here. You can style it up here.
and then you can tie it here. And then the bottom one can come completely off yes. as well. So you've got a little interesting, oh, it's got, this is the yeah, button ones. So it actually is undone on the back, but this is one of our older samples. You can take this bit off entirely, just like that. And you can wear the other one on its own too, like over a t-shirt or a jacket. Or yes, something. exactly, like a fun bib. Yeah. And then I'm actually wearing these beautiful leather shorts, just really easy. Do you want the puppy jacket with that? Yeah, I'm all with you with the puppy jacket. So just this long, relaxed short can be paired back with t-shirts, easy sweaters, all the knits that we've shown you today, you can really pair back to this. And it's to add something very modern and clean, but very approachable and easy to pair back to a lot of tops you already own. And this is, uh, so like this short for fall would be something that we would put into that fundamentals group that I said we're gonna always have uh, in the collection because, you know, again, bad information that you guys have been served up for so many years you know, every salesperson's like, honey, you need like a perfect, just clean white shirt and a little black skinny pant. And you don't, what you need is like the perfect blue and white shirt with like these weird fucked up ties and this black leather Bermuda short type thing. Like those can become your new um, go-to classic pieces that fuel your whole wardrobe. The shorts are that forever. So. And Yes. Yeah, with the tall boot and just back to this um, little fresh pop of um, just this light tan, it just makes it really dressed down but still elevated. And that is like with the puffer jacket, that is the perfect weekend brunch outfit. If she had the nylon joggers on underneath it, um, she could do that whole soccer thing with kids and not look like the, I gave you guys that picture of like, oh, those those shrunken little puppy jackets. Size, this is a small. And the pants are small. All smalls and fours and everything. And then you've got the, also, all the little hidden Oh, pockets. yes. For your important cards, even if you have a smaller phone here. Pacifier. And then you've got this big pocket here, and then obviously your side pockets. So this really replaces that puffer that we're always telling you to get rid of. Um, because it's just really, she can elevate it and still gives you the same level of warmth. Also, this one's water resistant too. Yeah. I always forget to talk about that, but that's really important. So it's chic, but it's also very functional. What other shoes would you wear with instead of boots? What other shoes would I wear? I would even pair back to the socks and pumps again. Um, and then even a sneaker too. Yeah, I think um, those, those Bermudas always depend on like how you feel about your legs and everything. I mean, for me, um, I would wear like a weird, I would wear like a black tight and a white sandal with them and then something dorky like this. But again, when you go dorky here, to me, this is a very urban outfit, like living out in Greenwich, Connecticut, I would wear it, but it would be one of those things where the other women would be like, you can only do that because you're a designer. Yeah. They're you like, know? oh, they're like, oh, I love what you're wearing, but I can't wear it. I'm yeah. like, you can in New York City. Yeah, but it's no. this is a New York, Paris, Milan, London, Hong Kong, Chengdu type club. Um, the other great thing too about this jacket is it is the ultimate uh, urban fall coat as well because the interesting like that whole turtle thing that we're into, um, it does like when I lived in the city and it was a Sunday afternoon in the fall. I think I joked about this, I always wanted that Harry Met Sally outfit that I would just go cruising through Central Park in. Um, and you're dressed, but like not dressed. This is like the perfect thing to wear. Um, it's just perfect, so there you go. And waterproof. What sneakers do you recommend that look modern and not sporty? Let's see, I just bought from Essence the um, Adidas um, Lota, Lota. She was a, she's a stylist for Balenciaga. She's a crazy style, good style. Anyways, they've got a, a, a capsule right now. And I like those. 
those are a little short in the front to me though so sometimes I feel a little oddly prissy in them um, let me say this I'm not crazy super into sneakers right now and one of the things every time I've been tempted to grab a sneaker I've grabbed um, you guys are like where did she go <laughs> um, I've been grabbing the loafer a lot so I'm I just kind of hit sneaker burnout. You know, I went through the whole Stan Smith phase and then the whole like looking at the Balenciaga chunky sneakers from afar and not really going there. But um, then I did the whole Nike thing for a while, but this feels new to me. Every time I put on a sneaker with something it hasn't felt as new and modern as I want it to be. So I I'm into the penny loafer right now, if, if I'm totally honest. It feels newer, right? I mean, sneakers are very functional, but penny loafers are super functional too. And we spent so much time to get those right because you guys know, like, if you are penny loafer people, I always like, I've always wanted like a fast Weijin that had been worn like five million times and maybe thrown in the washer and dryer, but that does not exist. So we really did create our own that's not too not too postal worker, not too, um, not too found, like just right. So I think that's what that is. Okay, so this is the Eco Poplin shirt and this is a very modern elevated top. It's not your average Eco Poplin. It's got the little extra sleeves that you can tie. Not really, you have to tie it first before you put it on generally, but yeah. And I also know too, if I don't know, Dion, how you feel on this, but when I put this on, I've taken the belt and I've run it all the way through to the back mm -hmm. because I felt like I had too many things dangling from yes. me. Yes. So just kind of leaving the belt hanging from the back there. Yeah, that felt a little cleaner. That makes it a lot cleaner. So this is just, you know, a casual like tuxedo shape, but then it has these extra arms and you can play around with how you style them. You can even have them down, we've been styled it that way, just for something really, really advanced, like this. But personally, I like to tie one in the front and one in the back as well. And this is, you know, when you are uh, wearing something really modern, I, I love this. If I put this on, it makes me feel alive. It is why I like fashion. And this is why, like, trust me, if you walk into a party and you've got that friend who's like, are you missing two of your arms? Like, are you, but that four arms, like, people, guys, like, those are friends that you can just, like, kind of step back and admire from afar, but, like, you don't need to, like, let that shit get into your head. You're not missing two of your arms. You just look great, and you feel great, and if you've got the four-armed friend woman, like, don't let her, or guy, or husband, who's like, honey, what's going on there? Just, you know, if you feel good in it, go for it. If you don't feel good in it, don't go for it. But I hope that like by watching this and figuring out how to mix things up that you will try new things. Um, so I know that some, some of the things are, you know, a little scary, especially if you've got Judgy Judy uh, living near you. Um, oh, you do, don't you? <laughs> my mom's name is Judy, but she's not Judgy. I mean, not to me, she is to my sister, but that's a long. That's a whole other story. Um, so the title in the back too. Yeah. Just another look too. Okay. A lot of options here. Yeah. That's good. That's pretty much it. All right, guys. So flotation devices, extra arms, all of these things are wearable when you know what to mix them with. And oddly enough, it will make you feel really good to wear them and try new things. Um, and if you balance it with things that 